Today we're going to look at epidemiology and the epidemiological approach that scientists use to study health-related events. We must remember the definition of epidemiology. Epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in specified populations in the application of this study to the control of health problems. Remember, epidemiologists are looking for patterns in a specified population so that they may create preventions or interventions for health problems. In order to do this, there's descriptive epidemiology, which has the goal of describing a health-related event. Just like a reporter reporting an event, they look at the what, who, when, and where. For an epidemiologist, this is the case definition, person, time, and place. The next step is analytical epidemiology. Here the goal is to explain why a health-related event occurs. This is most likely the risk factors, causes, or modes of transmission. Today our focus is descriptive epidemiology. The most important step is the case definition. The case definition is a set of standard criteria for classifying whether a person has a particular disease, syndrome, or health condition. Epidemiologists must have a case definition so that people can report cases to their project and so that these studies can be used to compare the health-related event across the United States or from country to country. For example, during the SARS outbreak, it was important that the CDC determined what a suspected case of SARS was, so that everyone was reporting cases of suspected SARS. Here we can see that there was a set of very specific criteria for whether or not someone was suspected to have SARS. For example, they needed to have a temperature greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, one or more symptoms of respiratory illness, cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, or radiographic findings of pneumonia or acute respiratory distress syndrome. And then they had to be in close contact with someone who was under investigation for having SARS. We see here that every part of the case defi definition has a very descriptive set of criteria. When we make our case studies, we must make sure that anyone who read our case definition would be able to identify whether or not a person had our health-related event. Next, in descriptive epidemiology, we want to figure out more about our case. And so the next part is describing personal characteristics that might affect illness. Here, we look at everyone who has our health-related event and look for characteristics such as age, sex, ethnicity or race, and socioeconomic status. Each of these characteristics may play into a different reason why the person is experiencing the health-related effect. For example, in pertussis, we can see here that this is a disease that affects young infants, children who are less than one year old. This is important because if we're looking at how to control the disease, we know that the lifestyle of a six-month-old is much different than someone who is 20 years old. Next is time. Time describes the time that the health-related event occurred. Depending on the health-related event, this could be in terms of hours, days, months, or years. For example, some diseases show a seasonal pattern. We know that influenza, or the flu, is most likely seen during the winter, as seen in this graph, where the pikes of positive test results occur in the winter months. West Nile is opposite to the flu, where we see pikes of the virus infection in the summer between August and September. Not all diseases occur in seasonal patterns. Diseases such as hepatitis and salmonella can occur at any time. Understanding the time of a disease or health-related condition can help scientists target 
prevention and intervention ties. Finally, place describes any geographic location relevant to disease occurrence. Again, this is specific to the health-related event in question. This could be the place of diagnosis, a birthplace, site of employment, school district, hospital unit, or recent travel destinations. Here, we can see that many times place is represented by a map. 